Shalom. Let me start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakodesh. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace and mercy to the house of David. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, who the world calls God. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son, who the world refers to as Jesus Christ. Bahasham is in the name, and Rakakodesh is the Holy Spirit. Also, shalom to the 144,000 men that's laboring this truth for the sake of Yahweh Shem Shai. And shalom to the innumerable multitude, men, women, and children that may be listening in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom. This is your brother Kodash coming back here with another video through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Shai. And the, uh, the title of this video, uh, Lord Willem, is uh, I'm going to go into uh, the topic here on my title of the video, The Lord Only Came for Israel. All right, and um, let me just start off here with the book of Matthew, chapter 10, and verse 16. So like Matthew 10 and 5, it says, These twelve Yahweh Shai sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. So the Lord commanded and said, go not to the way of the Gentiles, you see, and into and into any city of the Samaritans. And it says, and into any city of the, of the Samaritans, enter ye not. So don't go into the, uh, don't go into the heathen. It says, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You see, so the Lord is dealing with the nation of Israel. Okay. And all through up and out, all up and down throughout the scriptures, you see that the Lord is only dealing with the nation of Israel. All right, and oftentimes you may see uh, there's neither Jew nor Greek. All right, that's speaking about Israelite foreigners. All right, those that are mingled in with the other nations. All right, and also those that are uh, following the ways of the other nations. Okay, because you're gonna have our people looking like all different, uh, all different types of nations. Okay, but it says, <coughs> but always remember that the Lord is only dealing with the nation of Israel. So that makes it uh, to where there's no confusion. And um, let me uh, do something real quick so I don't time out. Uh, I think it's control. No. Yeah, here it is. You know, but the Lord said, go not unto the way uh, of the Gentiles, man. All right. Because the Lord is only dealing. He only came back for the nation of Israel. And uh, it, uh, the apostle, he brought this apostle to brought this out earlier today. Um, this is St. John chapter seven. And. This is St. John 7 and verse uh, 35. I'm going to read this in the NLT. It says, the Jewish leaders were puzzled by the state. Uh, let me start up. St. John 7 and 34 says, you will search for me, but not find me, and you cannot go where I am going. All right, this was Yahusha when he was speaking about he was going to go back up to the Father, you know, because he knew that his time was coming to where he was going to have to be put on that cross. All right. It says the Jewish leaders were puzzled by the statement. Where where is he planning to go? They asked. Is he thinking of leaving the country and going into and going to the Jews and other lands? Maybe he will even teach the Greeks. You see. So this is speaking about uh, Israelites that were. Uh, following after the Greekish factions, uh, fashions, okay, and it also said, "Is he thinking about leaving the country and going, in the, uh, and going to the Jews in other lands? You see, because we were scattered abroad. When you go to James one and one, 
Okay, let me read that. It says, James, a servant of the Most High and of the Lord Yahweh Shai, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Okay, so Sir James, a servant of our Lord, uh, of the Heavenly Father Yahweh and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. All right, it says, to the twelve tribes scattered abroad, greeting. So, James, uh, James pretty much is saying, Shalom. To the 12 tribes that are scattered abroad. Why? Because we've been scattered amongst all the other nations. All right. As a part of the curse. Okay. Let me actually go to that real quick. Uh, Deuteronomy 28. And verse. Uh, I believe it's 64 actually. Yeah. It says. Uh. And the Lord Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. You see, so we're going to be scattered abroad, scattered amongst all the people. All right. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other. It says, and there we shall serve other gods. And you, you know how people are. You got, you got. Uh, Jake, that's uh, that fucking Buddhist. That's uh, that's Islam. All right, you got Jake in Bangladesh. You got Jake in India. Okay, you got Jake in uh, Jake amongst Elam. Okay, you got Jake amongst Moab. You got Jake amongst the Hawaiians. We are amongst all these different nations. Jake amongst the Edomites. Okay, so the Lord scattered us among all the different nations. So therefore. Our people are going to look like the other nations and act like the other nations. You see? But their uh, bloodline, their uh, their lineage goes back to the 12 tribes. When you read Numbers 1 and 18, I have that here. It says, And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward by their poles. All right, so the point being they, they declared their pedigrees which goes back into your uh, your nationality, your lineage. And it says they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, man. All right, so the lineage goes back unto our father, man. All right, whatever your father is, that's who you are, you know? And that's why it's really through, you know, when a uh, when an Israelite woman goes and uh, and is with a, a a heathen man. Why? Because she's producing, she's uh, producing another nation. You see, I was thinking, I was meditating on that on that the other day. You know, you're helping bring these Israelite women are helping trying to help bring forth more Edomites. Okay. All right, they're trying to help bring forth more Moabites, more Ammonites, all right, more whatever other nation, man. All right, and that's that's through, man. You know, they're they're considered a stranger at that point. All right, you're an outcast to the uh, to the nation of Israel. All right, you can't attend the uh, uh, you can't uh, attend the holy days because you're unclean. You see? And uh, let me see real quick. Let me uh, go back to the uh, topic at hand. This is uh, St. John 7 and verse uh, 35. I'm going to read this again and I'm reading the uh, KJV. It says, Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go? That we shall not find him, will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? All right, and he, Apostle Tahar, went into the word uh, dispersed. Strong's G1290. Diaspora. Diaspora. It says a scattering dispersion. It says, of Israelites dispersed among foreign nations. You see? 
of Israelites dispersed among foreign nations, man. You see? So that's a cut. That's a cut, man. The Lord is only dealing with the nation of Israel. Let me see something real here. And that's where this is where people get tripped up at. Uh, this is Galatians 3 and 28. It says, for there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Hamashiach Yahawashah. You know, and the Christian will read that and be like, see, God says every so so you can only be a uh you can only be a either an Israelite or a Greek, you know? So at that point, if you're taking it off that type of knowledge, all right. Then you have to only you can only be a Greek or an Israelite to be to be delivered. You see? You know, they'll never say, uh, you see, uh neither Jew nor Greek uh well, this is saying something different actually now that I read it. It says there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male or female, for all are one and I'm So that's 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 how they would say, you know. All nations, everybody, uh, uh, a Chinese person, a Japanese, an African, you can all be saved, you know. So, uh, yeah, that, that's really what I was trying to get at there. Um, but let me get this. Let me get this in a in a in a uh, in a blue letter, Salakia. Let me get that word uh, Greek here. Strong's G, 1672, Helene, Helene. It says, uh, Helen, it says, a Greek either by nationality, whether a native of the land or of the Greek island or colonies, it says, uh, this, yeah, this is the one I really want, this is the point, it says, in a wider sense, the name embraces all nations, not Jews, that made the language, customs, and learning of the Greeks their own. It says the primary reference is to a different religion and worship. It says in the Strong's definition... It says a Greek speaking personally, person, usually a non, uh, usually a non-Jew, a Gentile Greek. It says a Greek either by nationality. That's. Uh, it says whether a native of the land, or of the Greek island or co colonies. You know, so you have. You're gonna have Israelites that are that were that were born in the uh, in the Greek islands, all right, or in the Greek colonies, you know. But their lineage goes back to uh, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to the twelve tribes. You see, so Yahweh Shai, he said Matthew ten and uh, six, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and. Who did Yahweh Shai sacrifice himself for? Starting with the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay. But here it says, uh, Acts 5 and 31 gets right to the point. Him hath the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins, man. You see? So the Lord, he, he put himself on that cross for his sins and for the nation, for the sins of the nation of Israel, so we can have repentance. You see, it doesn't say to <coughs> give repentance to all people, to all nations. All right, it's specifying how he gave, how he died on that cross and gave the repentance to Israel, to the Israelites, man. You all right? So this plain, man. This is uh, the book of Joel. 
chapter 2, verse 27. It says, And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord, Yahweh, your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. You see how the Lord, he's our God, and he's nobody else's power. You see? All right. It says, and my people shall never be ashamed, starting with the elect. Okay. The scriptures talk about uh, to not be ashamed of this gospel. Okay. All right. And if you're ashamed of Yahweh Shai, the Lord is going to be ashamed of you when he, ret when he returns, man. And he's not going to uh, save you. He's going to uh, have you be put to death. It says, and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord, Yahweh, your God. You see, your God. That's a possessive uh, pronoun, man. He's your God. Speaking to the Israelites. He's our God. It says, and none else. You see, no other nation's power, man. And my people shall never be ashamed, man. You see? And like I mentioned, starting with the elect. Let me grab this. I believe it's Second Timothy, actually. This is Second Timothy one. I'm gonna start at seven. For the most high have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Alright. Often go into it when you go into that word sound, it says mixed without any error, man. All right, so we have a sound mind uh, within this doctrine. All right, it says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of the Most High. You see, nor of me his prisoner. It says, But be thou partaker of of the afflictions. It says, be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, man. Don't be ashamed to be a witness of Yahweh Shai, preaching Yahweh Shai. All right. Prom ultimately, we're promoting uh, Yahweh Shai. All right. Let me go into that word uh, promote. Let me see what it says here. All right. Because hey, our people promote wickedness, but we're promoting Yahweh Shai. It says to advance to a higher to a higher it says to advance someone to a higher grade or office exalt or raise to a higher post or position you see so we're uh we are ultimately we're exalting Yahweh Shah you know I mean, that's a lesson in itself Lord willing so I can tap into that you know, on the next lesson right there, man. We are promoting Yahweh Shai. We are exalting uh, Yahweh Shai, man. But uh, let me go back to the topic at hand here. But, uh, you know, we got it. We went into that word, uh, that word Greek. And in the, in, uh, in the blue letter, it says Helen. All right. So those are Israelites residing in the uh, Greek in the uh, Greek islands, man. Yep, making the Greek. Um, learnings of their own and uh let me get one in let me see here This is uh, 1 Maccabees 1 and verse 11. It says, 
In those days went there out of Israel wicked men, who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow, man. So that's the same way how our people are today. Okay? They're, uh, they're making a covenant with the heathen, man. Okay? And they think, uh, it says, For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. They think this truth. That's why... Our people have that mentality today. That's that's why that's why people fall out, all right, because they departing from these Greek fashions of America, all right, and they're saying to themselves, all right, hey, we we got much sorrow in this truth, you know, it, it gets boring for them because they lack faith, so they want to go back into the world, go back into these Greek fashions, and quote unquote live their life. You see, you know, but our people, uh, they follow the ways of the heathen. All right, they're amongst the heathen, you know, and they end up making a covenant. All right, they end up selling their soul to the heathen. All right, and they they forever live their lives. Uh, they forever live their lives as a uh, as a heathen, huh? Okay, and they're gonna and, they're, and therefore the Lord's gonna be justified in killing them as they're a heathen. All right, being tossing them in that nuclear fire. All right, which means them being uh. Destroyed by that nuke by the nuclear fire, man. Okay. And um it's, I know it's many more precepts, you know, but uh let me grab this. First Corinthians twelve and one and two says, Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. You see, it says, Ye know that ye were Gentiles, all right, because you can be a Gentile in your state of mind. You can't actually be a heathen and then convert to an Israelite. It doesn't work like that. All right. And uh, let me get. This is a. Uh... Gentiles. Strong G, 1484. Ethnos. Ethnos. It says a tribe, nation, people. You know, so a tribe, nation, people. That's really the point here. You know, so you're you can be a Gentile uh, and this this uh, precept here is proof that you can be a Gentile in your state of mind. See, it says carried away uh, unto dumb idols. I'll read this in the NLT. It says, you know, that when you were still pagans, you were led astray and swept under and worshiping speechless idols, man. You see, so following after these different idol gods, man. That's how you're a Gentile. Look at our people now. Two thirds of our people are Gentiles, man. They're in a Gentile uh, state of mind. Two thirds of our people are in a Gentile state of mind. And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much the point, man. The point has been made. You know, I brought out Old Testament, New Testament. Apocrypha, which is considered Old Testament. All right. Hey, let's go. Let's hit the nail in the coffin, so to speak here. This is a uh, revelation. So I can get this here. Revelation 21 and 12, it says. I'm going to start at 10 and it says, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from the Most High. That's the elect descending out of, uh, out of them chariots, man. All right, out of that chariot. Showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, man, knowing, showing that we are a people before a place. It says, having the glory of the Most High and her light was... 
and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. You see, so where where do you see any other nation in this man in this future prophecy of the of the of the holy city jerusalem where do you see any any other nation labeled here besides the children of israel all right we're not all children of israel all right you have different nations man it says on the east three gates on the north three gates on the south three gates and on the west three gates man that's 12 tribes man all right so with that, you know, Lord willing, this video was edifying. I'm going to close and give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, or Kakodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the house of David. And to the next lesson, I say Shalom and Ababa Ba'asham.